Welcome back to Tales Tomorrow. I am Maro, your storyteller for today, and I have some, you guessed it, RPG horror stories to cover. Also, before we begin, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> let's uh, get to the RPG horror stories for today. Character would be so much more fun if the GM would be less strict on the rules. I played a character in the campaign, rolled really horribly on the stats, and I wasn't allowed to redo it. I can work with that though. Unfortunately, the DM makes sure everything is constantly by the books. Everything has to be rolled. And considering how god awful my character stats are, and that's combat focus and strategy type thing for me at the time, and how pretty decent to amazing everyone else's stats are, it's impossible for my character to do much for anything of value. He's comedic relief and it gets incredibly boring when I just sit there for 3 hours hoping the session ends soon. I brought up how absolutely boring he is to play and people said he was funny so I should just keep playing him. At some point I even made a whole new character to replace him if I can kill him off. Wasn't allowed to do so. The GM even went on a whole rant on how much of an inconvenience I was being so I felt bad just played him again. What? It's for the GM inconvenient that the player is having a really difficult time? Oh, is it inconvenient for the GM that the player has really bad stats and asks specifically, hey, can I just reroll the stats? They're really crappy, right? If everybody else has high stats, but your one player has really low stats and is basically doesn't like that and it feels bored out of his mind, out of his gourd to play at low stats and constantly be getting gimped, why don't you just let him reroll the stats? Or hey, make that new character. If the character's bored of the character, then just let him make a new one. Would not be easier or is that inconvenient somehow? I think it'd be more convenient and the player wouldn't be complaining and stuff and everybody would be happy. What's more convenient than people being happy about what they're playing? Keep in mind, it's not just my character, it's entirely useless. Most of the campaign and I can't do much with him. But he's also the butt of the joke every two seconds. Everyone insults him and makes fun of him. And that's on him and it gets kind of annoying after a while. When everyone else's characters are taken somewhat to actual serious and the GM constantly goes on a rant about how much power their characters has and how great the OC is in comparison to everyone else, especially to mine, it gets boring and kind of irritating. Okay, if the other players are just being dicks for the sake of being dicks and making fun of your character, then I mean, that's... What's going on at this table? What is up with the DM or what's up with this table? I feel like your table is just very antagonistic and you should probably leave the table. If it weren't for that, he'd be a lot more fun to play. I've played him as he is in a systemless RP before. And he wasn't suddenly super OP or smart or fast. We're just able to be played without it being insufferably boring. And logically, he lives in a dystopian world with how I am restricted to playing him in a campaign. There's no way he could have survived just logically. And he has talents. I'm just not really allowed to use those to balance him out. OP, if your DM does not allow you to reroll really, really, really bad stats or get some sort of way to make a new character with better stats, then I mean, sounds like your DM sucks. And if your players are making fun of your character and it's constantly the butt of the joke, even if we can tell them to stop, it sounds like your players suck. It sounds like you just need to find a different game. When I started my Final Fantasy XIV uh, D&D 5e homebrew campaign, God, that's a long thing to say. Let's just go with Final Fantasy D&D campaign. When I started my FF D&D campaign, I decided that the best fair thing would be is to roll on stats of threes, right? You roll three sets of stats and you choose the one that you like. Instead of, you know, rolling for two, just rolling for one and just get what you got. At least with three rolls, right? You have the randomness of choosing the stats and you have the likelihood of at least one of the rolls being better and much more proficient stats and much more potent stats than the other two. That way the players aren't screwed over if let's say for example they roll one set of stats and they get everything crappy or two set of stats with one being crappy and the other one less crappy. I had that experience already before in previous campaigns and the last thing I wanted to do is make it difficult for my players to enjoy their characters because I mean yeah you're gonna get sometimes an eight you're gonna get sometimes plenty of 10s. But I mean, as long as not all your stats across the board are terrible, then players can have fun. And then at the end of the day, I want my campaigns to be fun. And this DM clearly doesn't want the campaigns to be fun, I guess. Anyway, OP, you should probably leave the table or just try to have a talk. And if the talking doesn't work, find a different group, find a better group for yourself. LAR player are not okay with my character because they have a different skin color than me. Hello, this is my first time posting. I'm new to the subreddit, but I'm very familiar because of YouTube, Crispy's Tavern, and Sir Knox. This is a story about my first and only LARP experience, a Vampire the Masquerade LARP game. 
My friend and I participate in a Vampire the Masquerade LARP, which was about 5-7 to seven years ago. If I'm not mistaken, I believe one of the ex-co-workers had set us up. Long story short, we finally had a meeting with the storyteller, the game dungeon master of Vampire the Masquerade. Everything went well, and he officially welcomed us as new members of the group. During the meeting, we created our characters with the help of Storyteller. I chose to play a vampire from the Giovanni clan. We were playing with the revised 3rd edition rules and lore. In the lore, the Giovanni clans are described as being descendants from a rich merchant group of Venetian who dabbled in the dark arts of necromancy. The vampire from the Giovanni clan, stereotypically image and banner of the book, are inspired by pop culture depiction of Italian organized crime in the US, the Italian Sicilian American Mafia. Personally, it doesn't bother me. I love movies and series about Italian Mafia. But there was a problem. When I told him I wanted to play as a vampire from the Giovanni clan, he almost denied my request right there. The reason is necromancy, which means they can control ghosts. Ghost was a problem for him. Necromancy was overpowered according to him, and he was convinced this would bring too much chaos into the game. But I really wanted to play as one, as it turns out, I actually didn't care about necromancy at the moment, and it fitted with my character's backstory. I think it's fine to bend some of the rules around, especially if the player is okay with it, right? Like there's some variants of tiefling that start off with flight immediately. If flight is a big problem, and the DM is like, I am not really cool with you having flight, then just tell the player that, maybe find an alternative, maybe make it from flight into like a gliding mechanic until a certain level and then flight gets enabled, I don't know. I've been in games where like if somebody's an arrow cockerel, they don't want to have the character be able to fly from the beginning because it just create a huge imbalance of the game and just make planning stuff out a lot more difficult because when you have the one character that can just fly away from combat and just range from far away, it can, can definitely cause issues of balancing stuff, what have you, right? Some DMs absolutely hate fairies because they're tiny and they fly around and what have you. I think the best outcome is like, talk to your players, figure out like, hey, what if like, I know I, typically I'm supposed to start with necromancy, but what if I don't care for necromancy, I just won't play the Giovanni. Right? I think it's perfectly fine. Somebody wants to play a variant tiefling with flight later on, right? And they know the DM doesn't like flight in early levels. They could be like, hey, why don't you just make it so that my wings are hurt? And I have to, in a story, get him healed later. And then I can have flight. I think it's perfectly fine. I think that kind of thing is perfectly okay. If the player is okay with it, DM is okay with it, game can move on. I told him my character is simply put, the muscle. I proceeded to explain to him, since I'm storyteller as well, but only do a tabletop, that vampires from Giovanni clan are very well known in the lore for keeping their ghouls for 50 years or more, even going further than 100 years in some instances. This was also saving my idea because I had earlier in the same discussion asked if vampire could have been from the prohibition era, as I was refused. He insists that all players began playing as a neonate, a vampire who has been turned into a vampire 25 years ago or less. Fair enough, but my solution worked, because as a ghoul, the vampire blood you're given to keeps you loyal and strong has multiple side effects, one of them being that it prevents humans from aging, which means I would still look in my mid-30s even though I'm actually over 100 years old, but as a human. I haven't just been turned into a vampire in the last 5-10 to 10 years. And to make it even more lore friendly, let's have my character be in the Putanesca? I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce it. Putanesca? Putanesca? I might just do the same thing that I did with the other uh, Vampire the Masquerade story. Just go Roma Ars Putanesca. Make it like, give it a little bit of an accent, like a Khajiit in a Skyrim. Putanesca, a bloodline, a subgroup of the Giovanni clan, were stereotypically known to embrace, turn into vampire only thugs and the mobsters like Sicilian mafioso. Let's just say I was born at the turn of the 20th century in a poor Sicilian American family, went to war, came back, couldn't find a job, their prohibition started and got evolved into a heist, met people like Lucky Luciano and Mayor Lansky and Bugsy Siegel. I worked for them as muscle. Eventually came under the radar of some Sicilian mobsters from the old country of Sicily. He offered me a better position, worked for this vampire for nearly 80 years as a bodyguard during the day and a forcer or whatever else my skill set could be of use to him. Then 10 to 15 years later, he finally transformed me into a vampire. Fast forward to the present day, my character hasn't showed up any interest in necromancy and all that hocus pocus mumbo jumbo crap. He's a no-nonsense kind of guy. He knows how to hurt people and intimidate them. He's also slowly built a network of people he trusts around the years. He isn't the smartest guy, but he's a street smart. He has picked up thing or two during the past century, or working with and alongside people much smarter than him. Nice way to take this thing to the next level. 
First, he's aiming at becoming a problem solver that most people with a lot of political weight, including other vampires, can rely on. Open a few nightclubs around the city. Longer term, he tends to take over the organization crime for the city and be the godfather. Use his business to launder his money. That's always actually part of the backstory. The writer has done a really good job, like, uh, compartmentalizing everything from, like, uh, story progression, context, backstory stuff. And, I mean... I don't know how far Vampire the Masquerade story limits go, but I mean, hey, if it checks out with the DM, then it checks out with the game. I think it's fine. I never play va Vampire the Masquerade. I have a friend that plays it. I might ask her if, like, I can join in for sessions or at least watch, see how they like. So I finally told the storyteller that I wouldn't take any point in necromancy. I'm only taking dominate, mind control, and potence, superhuman strength. The storyteller was happy with the result, and so was I. I was hyped. At the LARP, our first game, every single other player was activating Auspex. It's mental power that allows a vampire to see invisible stuff like aura, or in this instance, a ghost. In an attempt to detect where my ghosts were, everyone thought I was spying on them with my ghosts. All of them were spending their resources, their blood. Vampire's way of activating their abilities is by spending blood like a spellcaster uses mana, or spends those spell slots in D&D and Pathfinder. The storyteller kept telling them no, he can't see the ghosts. You don't see any ghosts. It was pretty funny to me. Then at some point, someone said something about my character being black or something. I said, oh no. Sorry, of course. He was the first person to ask me about the look of my character. So I explained that my character looked like this heavy built 6 foot 4 white Caucasian with a small tan. Sicilian American mobster. Very intimidating. This person in front of me was having a problem with me. Because my character did not look anything like me. Specifically because my character did not have the same skin color. I didn't understand the problem. Eventually both of us got upset and both of us started arguing louder and the game stopped. The storyteller came to me and asked what was the problem. I explained what my character looked like. I even showed them. I had printed a screenshot I had taken several days prior to a character I made using the character creation in my video game Saints Row, the third, to create a character that looked like what I imagined my character would look like. Honestly, that's a really clever way to do it. <laughs> Saints Row the Third has some great character customization. Honestly, for like a modern character, yeah, that sounds perfect. I love that idea. So I printed that screenshot and brought it with me to have a visual reference of my character, in case anyone cared. Anyways, the storyteller looked at me confused and said, But you're black. Is this storyteller saying that like you, your IRL skin color has to match like your character? I'm red. What? Do you think anybody's gonna be this red? Is this storyteller serious? Is this actually real? So, I am biracial in real life. My mother is Caucasian white and my father is black, Afro-American. My skin is a lighter shade of brown than my father, but most people usually guess I'm either light-skinned black or Hispanic when they first meet me. I was like, what does this have to do with the game and my character? It's in our heads. Both of them looked at me confused and told me, but you look nothing like your character. I was about to answer and he was interrupting me and continued. Look, I have a solution. Come with me. I wanted to play the game very badly. I was trying, hoping we could reach common ground. To me, this argument was really silly. I couldn't believe they had a problem with me not being a white Italian in real life. And I was confident that we could resolve this amicably. Common sense would prevail, right? So I agreed to follow him to another room in the back. Once there, he tore a sheet of paper from a book, make a sort of a name tag. Then he took a pen, wrote on a piece of paper, white skin. Then took a pen, pinned that piece of paper on my suit, above my chest. Then he said, there you go, with a smile. Now everyone will know the roleplay in accordance to your character's skin color. Come on, let's go back to the game. What? If it's like a LARP, wait, is it like a live action roleplay, like a cosplay? Who cares? What does it matter? He's playing a character. He's literally playing a He's LARPing a character in a fantasy setting. It's all make-believe and all pretend. This is this doesn't make sense. This literally makes no sense to me. What is what is his DM's angle? I was so bothered at that moment. I was fighting myself to try to find a way to come at it from a different angle, from a different perspective, from their perspective. Nah, dude, they ain't worth it. Honestly, people seem like jerks. Completely, complete jerks. I told myself, it's true. You can't necessarily know what the actual characters really look like. How would they know a player before they asked me what my character's skin color is? 
Why does it matter? Why would it even matter in the first place? Why would skin color matter in the first place when you're playing a character that is not you? You're not playing yourself. You're playing a character. You are a vampire. Guess what? Vampires don't exist. Vampire. What? Are the forcing people to also have fangs and no like teeth, like fake fangs to like play a character? What is this? Why are they doing this? Why are you sticking with this? Why are you tolerating this? Why don't you say, nah, fam, this is not worth it. I'm out. I'm outie. But I kept going in a circle in my head. I kept coming back to the conclusion. That's what actually was a problem of all our characters, not just mine. None of us look like our characters. Really? I wonder why? Is it because you're all playing fantasy characters? What, is everybody gonna have a little silly name tag saying exactly the character description to a T? What is this? What the heck? It's a LARP. It's a live action roleplay. I'm assuming everybody's physically there. They're putting on a suit, a costume, and just live action roleplay. That's all it is. What does it matter how people look? They're playing a character that probably looks nothing like them. You think I look like this, IRL? No. My horns are way bigger. I was like, dude. Aside, they were both returned to the main room. I was boiling inside, but I was trying to remain calm, keep my composure. I walked to the middle of the room, still trying to calm myself, and started scanning the room. Looking at all the other players, mainly those I had an opportunity to speak with and learn about the characters. Looking at them again only reinforced my position on this issue. To me, none of them, none, look remotely close to their character. I turn around, look at my friend, same thing. And now, for context, I love my friend. I love him like a brother. We're very close. He was playing a vampire from the Toreador clan. Vampires from the Toreador clan are described as socialites, dilettantes, dilettantes, or however you pronounce, I don't know how to pronounce that. They look posh, always dressed in the finest clothing obsessed with everything beautiful, arts, music, and people. They have access to presence, which is a vampiric ability that allows the vampires to mesmerize people and more easily manipulate or seduce them. My friend was playing a Toreador with the description of being this Don Juan, one of the sexiest men to ever walk to the face of Earth. No woman could ever resist his charm. Okay, so let's be real here for a moment. No offense to anyone that was there, but none of us, except maybe one girl, would be described as hot. Not even remotely so. I know this is kind of mean to say, but really, we all look like a bunch of stereotypical nerds, myself included. Most of us were overweight, with poor and non-existent fashion sense, socially awkward. Most of us, I think on our best day, maybe would be considered average looking at best. Which is why it's really strange that the storyteller just really wanted to enforce this onto this specific player when none of them look like these vampires. I think most of the time, vampires in media in general are described as these gorgeous beings, unless you're like the Nosferatu type. Those are the ugly motherfuckers. But every other vampire, from what I understand, in most media is described as really gorgeous, pretty, almost like a, a statuette of a time frozen they basically have immortality and they're really pretty and stuff right if you're in the larp everybody's playing pretend why does it matter if one character has a slightly darker skin color than everybody else is and everybody else does not look anything at all like the characters like the don juan character like it's nothing wrong with looking average you are how you are you should accept yourself and love yourself for who you are but like what's the point of this why is this weird double standard from the DM or the storyteller. I just, I just don't get it. This makes no sense to me. My friend at the time was struggling with his weight and had gained a lot of it. He was close to above 400 pounds. I can say because of that alone, I think most people if they're being completely honest would not be sexually attracted to my friend during the time. It sounds like he lost a lot of weight and not close to 200 pounds. I'm proud of him. But why am I sharing all this you might be asking yourself? Because everyone in attendance was not having a problem with the fact that he, my friend, looked like nothing like his character, but everyone else was having a problem with me not looking like my character. I feel like the storyteller and whoever else bad actors that are involved in this are the kind of people that get upset when somebody cosplays their favorite anime character, but like the cosplayer's skin color is different, like maybe they're a little more tan or maybe too pale or something. Dude, it doesn't matter, it's all make-believe, it's all fake. It's literally all fake. It doesn't matter how the person looks, like the, the actual player looks. They're playing a character. I am playing a character. I am playing a character right now myself. I am Mara the Tiefling. Does, does it really matter what I look like behind the scenes? No. But I mean, I wish they could have my horns a little bit bigger. That'd be nice.
Once I was done thinking about that, I turned around at the storyteller, who was still very close to me near the middle of the room, and addressed him and everyone in attendance. I said to everyone, Now you have a problem with my character because he is in the same skin color as me, but none of you have a problem with anyone else, or have any problem with my friend who looks like nothing like his character. I bought this cheap suit for 100 bucks at the mall. I don't have the kind of money to buy myself a $2,000 Armani suit, but I assume that all of you role-played as if it was wearing the nicest looking suit money can buy. I assume, I'm hoping that you were not picturing my character wearing this exact suit. Or that other player over there was playing Nosferatu wearing a Halloween mask. Obviously his character isn't wearing a mask in the story, right? His mask looks funny. Not scary at all, not even close to how terrifying his character's appearance is described us in the story. But we all pretend like he looks very disturbing, don't we? We bridge the gap without imagination. I turned to the woman in the red dress. What about her? The Toriador. She's far from looking like her character. I was implying that she is not pretty enough to be that character if the problem was that you were expecting to look exactly like your character. I get the OP's point, but I'm hoping he's not gonna be like, look at this woman, she's not pretty at all, she's ugly as hell. That'd be kind of messed up, that'd be really, really mean. I hope it's not going that way. For context, she was also playing a Toriador, and she was the Primogen, the representative of the clan in the vampire politics of the given city. And like my friend, she was playing as this character in her case, a female vampire, described as being the sexiest woman to ever walk on the earth. My point being that her in real life looked nothing like that in description. The only thing that came to mind at the moment was that she was fat and her hair looked greasy. But I did, I did not say that. This would have been in bad taste, at least in my opinion. And I was trying to make a point, not insult them. Okay, OP, you gotta choose your words carefully. I mean, you... <laughs> I, I get it, I get it. you upset that people put a stupid name tag and they're wrong for that. They're really wrong for that. But I don't think you're gonna make an argument going like, Look at my friend, he's fat. Look at her, she's not pretty and greasy. Like, I mean, <laughs> this is a very strange situation OP was put in. And I'm, I'm understanding of a lot of things were said probably because they were frustrated. They were upset, now mad even over this and i'm pretty sure they meant it in the best possible way basically trying to point out listen we don't look like our characters because there's no way we can look like pretty as fuck vampires but i'm hoping it's not going to the insulting area because oh it's really bordering on that again i know it's mean and you could argue that maybe someone somewhere does fit her pretty and all fair enough look even if you were to argue that she was prettier than what i was describing her she was not a 10 in no world would anyone on earth would think she was, at least if we're strictly rating her by her looks alone at 10. But her character was being described as a 12 on a scale of 10, based on her character looks alone only. You you made a point saying she did not match her character. You don't have to go down and be like, she was not a 10 at all. She was ugly, she was fat, her hair was... Like, you don't have to. <laughs> you made a point when you said she wasn't fitting she wasn't like her character right her character was described as the most gorgeous woman in the world and she just wasn't you made the point clear you don't have to like go further in <laughs> I, I understand where you're coming from i understand where you're coming from but just like let's tone down on the insults after saying that i reached my breaking point seeing as everyone was remaining silent and the look on their face my impression at that moment was that everyone else except my friend was looking at me thinking well obviously i can't really know what they were thinking but to me it looked like a bunch of people that were annoyed by me i was currently bothering them or at least this is how i felt at the moment some of them looked confused as if they couldn't understand what i was trying to tell them like anything i just said made no sense at all to them so after maybe a minute or so of complete silence i looked at my friend and said I'm out. I'm going home. Our friend understood. Both of us left together. I understand you're probably upset when you said all that, and you have every right to. The storyteller in this LARP sucks. They all, everybody else that also agree with the storyteller, they also suck. Anybody else that thought that your skin color had was a problem to this thing, they suck. Basically what I'm saying, you're justified in being upset, but you don't have to be mean to everybody else there, okay? <laughs> the main point, however, is that the storyteller and the people that are involved that had a problem with your skin color, they suck. They suck, and honestly, I'm glad you said something. You probably didn't say things in the most eloquent way, but I'm glad you said something. I'm glad you said something, and maybe you got other people to think, that, yeah, this guy's being kind of a jerk. What the heck? 
I don't know. And with that, that's gonna be all our stories for today. I want to thank you very much for watching and thanks so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.